So this is checkpoint four at Anglesey, the 50 kilometer mark for 100k runners. And the start of the 50 kilometer race is down on the beach, but you pretty soon have to join uh, the same course as 100k runners. Uh, yeah. Okay, so about 500 metres after starting League 3, you get to the Fame Bridge. You've got to go under there, okay? All the 100 km runners doing League 3, all the solo runners, you've got to go under there. 50 km runners, you're lucky, you get to go over the road, okay? It's too many of you in a short space of time to squeeze through under here. We put carpet down, okay? So it's a lot more comfortable than it is now. And yeah, sure, it's low. This is the lowest. The first bar here is the lowest, and it slowly gets higher. So, and then, uh, so it's getting easier as you go. Sorry, look. Through we go. Normally you do it on hands and knees. I've only got one hand at the moment because I'm holding on the camera. But look, there's these ribs. You can stand up uh, underneath the, uh, in, in between the ribs. So you can give yourself a break. If you're cramping up, stand up and then uh, keep on going. And as you can see, it's getting a little bit higher. The further on we go, I don't even need to use my knees now. And then uh, out we uh, out we pop. So there, that's the bridge. Then we're going on through that way there. Oh, look at that hill! It's about three and a half kilometres into the leg. You get to what we call Heartbreak Hill. It looks not long, it's not super steep, but it does sort of kick you. It's the first hill of uh, leg three, and I'd recommend you walk it. So not long after Mount Inglesby, you get to uh, the top of this hill, which is Hut Gully, down there, all the way down, all the way up. The runners go up that track. It's probably about the second hill, second major hill of uh, leg three here. So in the kilometres after Anglesey and Mount Inglesby, you're on these beautiful tool drive dirt roads that just wind through the heathland. Makes for some really lovely running. Uh, allows you to get your legs turning over and just sinking into the, into the leg if you're doing it as a relay or cover some more kilometres if you're doing the 100k. Alright, so about the 10 kilometre mark, you turn off those two wheel drive tracks and turn onto the uh, single track through here leading to Ted's Ridge. You've got about, uh, gee, the next 10 or 12 kilometers is all uh, beautiful single track that uh, puts you through the heathland. So at about the 12 and a half K mark or so, you turn onto this beautiful loop, single track loop, signpost to Carawong Falls, and it just makes for some magnificent running. You can see here, nice and wide, good sort of flowing trail through the heathland. It's something to really look forward to, I reckon, and a real feature of the area, but certainly of leg three. The first half of this is, look, it's a gentle climb, but it's runnable. The second half of this bit of single track does steepen up, and this is the biggest climb on the whole course, on the whole leg, but not the whole 100 k's as well. But uh, it's through some lovely bushland, and I think, uh, you know, it's an enjoyable run, a real feature of the track. This is the spot you've been waiting for. This is the top of the Karawong Falls climb and the highest point of the whole course of the whole 100k Surf Coast Century. Well done. Look, I think that climb, it, uh, it has some flatter parts and some steeper parts, but a lot of it is runnable. Okay, by all means, walk the steeper parts. But, you know, if you want to post a good time or chase one of those steins, then you want to be running bits of that and then uh, certainly running the downhill here to, here to come. But this is the section of the course that you've been saving your energy for. You know, we talked about at leg one and leg two about running conservatively and saving those bickies for later on in the course. This is where you need them right here. So uh, hopefully if you've managed yourself well, you'll better run that quite strongly and keep on powering on towards the end of leg three. Here we are at the 20 kilometre mark. This is where checkpoint uh, five is located here at the Distillery Creek picnic ground. It's a lovely spot. It's a fun descent uh, coming down from that trig point. Uh, a little bit rooty and rocks uh, technical in parts, but still uh, nice fun running from there. So about the 22, 23 kilometre mark, not too far after checkpoint five, you get to the Painclack Reservoir here. Uh, it's a nice body of water, but 
this is the forgotten what I call the forgotten hill this is where the track heads up and it's quite a solid climb it's on a you know two wheel drive four wheel drive track like this now uh, it crosses over the gentle landing track at the top it's a bit stepped uh, steeper flatter steeper flatter but it's certainly tough and I think this is the crux part of leg three and uh, one where again if you've saved your energy from earlier on in the course uh, particularly the 100k runners uh, this is where you'll start to make those gains again uh, up here Woo. so after that step climb you get to the top here where you're crossing a uh, gentle landing track and then it's a fun descent downhill a whole way from here down to checkpoint uh, what are you up to checkpoint six down at Morks Creek so all right so here we are checkpoint six at the Morks Creek picnic ground you did a leg three run and done it's a beautiful journey that one I think uh, yeah it's tough and challenging but a lot of runners say it's their favorite uh, their favorite leg um, so it's got plenty of scenery and variety and when you get to this checkpoint here it is pumping with people this is probably the best atmosphere of the whole course right here the campfire is going people are lying clapping and cheering and if you're doing the whole thing you've only got one leg to go leg four <laughs> 